You know, I've said several times on Mysteries of Superstition Mountain that I'm not a Dutch hunter. I'm not. I've never looked for the Dutchman's gold, and I probably never will. But you know, I've run across a few things. Uh, I've mentioned it in a mystery story a time or two, but I'm going to tell you my idea of where the Dutchman's mine might be. I don't necessarily believe it. I'm just telling you my theory on a personal uh, expedition that I was on. And this, this was nearly 40 years ago. And in fact, I don't even think the museum with Goldfield Ghost Town was open yet, our first museum. Uh, still working on the exhibits and an old wiry man came to the museum and uh, I let him go through and he spent an inordinate amount of time over at the mine tunnel where all the p pictures of the various maps were to be found. And he came back the next day. And in fact, he came back two or three times and each time he would engage me in conversation. He wanted to know if I knew where this place was or where that place was. Obviously, he wasn't very familiar with the mountains. But then one day he asked me if I would go with him in the mountains. And I told him that I never have gone in there on foot. And I'm not going to start now. I've always went horseback. And uh, he came back a couple of days later and he says, I've got a helicopter lined up. Would you go with me? And I said, well, I don't know you from Adam's off ox. So if I could take a friend, I'd gladly go with you. And so he agreed. He said there was room. And I got my friend Hank Brown and who helped with the museum an awful lot with the stamp mill and stuff like that. And we left from Falcon Field and uh, flew into the mountains and uh, uh, we, we didn't land, but uh, I guess we parachuted down. <laughs> anyway, we ended up on top of Music Mountain of all places. Now Music Mountain is a, an interesting place. It's kind of hard to get up on. There's on three sides of some sheer cliffs and what have you. And then of course there's Music Canyon. And uh, this story fits the clues pretty good because you know, you, you went to the board house, you went up over that lofty ridge down by Weaver's Needle, taking a North Trinian Canyon into a tributary, which would have been La Barge. And we headed east down La Barge and we eventually came to Music Canyon. And uh, Hank and I took a, a sack lunch with us. The old man, as soon as we got there, he took off. He didn't want to tell us what it was he was looking for, but he took off in a southeasterly direction. And we sat up there on top of Music Mountain for a couple of hours. And then we sat down with our backs against this little knoll on top and uh, started eating our lunch. And I happened to look down Music Canyon and there it was. And I said, Hank, look. And Hank looked. He says, I've been looking that for, for 20 years. And the next day he was out there without me looking at this place because this canyon had a perfect replica of the Ruth Gonzalez map and the two spires sticking up. And it just is just absolutely fantastic to look at this from a different angle because from La Barge Canyon looking up Music Canyon, there's a big S turn, and you can't see that from down below. And of course, La Barge was one of the military trails that go through there. Everything was facing westward, and the sun would shine on this area. And uh, you could see the military trail, but they couldn't see up to you. Everything fit. To kill some time, I walked around this knoll, and when I got around on the north side, right there in front of me was an intrusion of quartz that was slightly pinkish. It was white, but slightly pinkish, coming out of the mountain, going for about 15 or 20 yards, and then disappearing back into the mountain. And it was obviously uh, exposed by erosion, but uh, 
I, I kept that in mind all these years. Uh, like I said, I'm not a Dutch hunter, but I did take a rock and knock, knock against it and broke off a couple of pieces and stuck them in my pocket. And when I got home, I got a magnifying glass out and each one of them had one little speck of gold in it. And uh, I always thought, you know, I ought to go back there someday. Well, you know, we, the crew from Superstition Mountain uh, Mysteries is uh, thinking about doing an expedition this fall. Uh, they maybe try to find that outcrop. But more importantly, from uh, top of um, Music Mountain, I took a 180 degree uh, panorama uh, showing Miner's Needle to the south, uh, Weaver's Needle, uh, Labard down Labarge Canyon, you could see the Goldfield Mountains in the background and then Tortilla Mountain on the right. And it, uh, it's a fantastic place to get an overview of the heart of the legend. And uh, we want to go up there with a 360 degree camera. Now I'm not going, but we want to get a 360 degree shot to the east as well and get a complete panorama of that area. Now I know a lot of Dutch hunters, the old, some of the old ones that have died, and I know some of the current people that are still consider themselves Dutch hunters or are actively searching for the mine. And I have asked several of them, have they ever been on top of Music Mountain? And I have never found anybody who says they've been on the top of Music Mountain until recently. One fellow said he found a whole horseshoe up there. So I contacted him and asked him, and he didn't see anything about, about uh, any quartz outcropping or anything like that. But it's, it's a place where not a whole lot of people have gone. There's no trails up at the top that are worn. As you know, it's just, it's just, uh, it's not an easy place to get to. And, um, you know, as you think about other stories we've told about volcanics and stuff like that, how um, Goldfield Ghost Town, where the Mammoth Mine was found on the surface, used to be a mountain and it collapsed as the magna withdrew and became a caldera, and the gold was found right on the surface. And uh, Superstition Mountain itself, according to geologists, is one of the world's largest resurgent calderas. In other words, Superstition Mountain also collapsed and then was pushed back up. So if the gold at Goldfield was found at ground level and the superstitions was pushed back up, where would you think the gold would be? Wouldn't it be higher than anybody thinks? Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> well, of course, I'm not a Dutch hunter. Well, the guy came back and picked us up, and uh, I just want to finish the story by saying uh, the name of this man was none other than Walter Brennan. <sighs> no, not that one. He was a detective from uh, Las Vegas, and uh, <laughs> it's, he, he was a very amenable person, and. Uh, I enjoyed being with him very much. But on the way out, he kind of disclosed what it was he was looking for. Uh, he was looking for an 18 inch opening on a mountainside that you crawl through and it opened up into a bigger cavern. And uh, I immediately thought of Tom Collinborn when Tom let me read a page out of his father's diary. He had found an 18 inch opening. He crawled back in there, it opened up into a bigger cave and then narrowed down again and opened up into an even bigger cave. And he found in there a couple of old trunks. Now it didn't say whether he opened them or not. It just said that he didn't tell his friends, which he used initials like TK or RJ. I didn't tell them about it because they would just take it out and put it on their mantle. I just left them there. The only difference was, this was on an entirely different mountain than what the old man was looking for. And all I can say, that opening, uh, Tom and I went up one time to look for it, 
But as happens in many cases, instead of going to where we planned to go, we ended up going someplace else. So that little 18 inch opening is just another mystery of the Superstition Mountains. Thank you for watching this episode of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains.